After watching this video, you will never color an orange that looks like this again. Hi guys, welcome back. Well, today is the day we change up the way you're coloring. In my last video, we talked about limitations. Now, because we're working with coloring books, and coloring books don't normally have the greatest paper. It's not artist grade. I'm gonna teach you these techniques so that you can work in a coloring book. Now, this technique for doing orange peel is what we can do in a book. Is it going to be hyper real? No, because you really can't get hyper real out of a coloring book. It has lines, it, it's where we, we have limitations, but you don't have to color like this. This is just pure gradient, nothing special. You just don't have to do it that way. You can put a little bit of realism in it. And for this method, you're going to have to use a reference photo. If you've joined the CMW workbook and the and the work groups that I've set up, I've already got five full groups. And if you want to join one of them, it is free. I am giving one-on-one -on -one to everybody in the groups that need the help. We're working together and I am providing sketches. So what you need to do to join a group and everybody is invited. You don't have to be working out of the workbook to join. You don't have to even show me your work. If you're uncomfortable and you just want the instruction, that's fine too. How much participation you do is up to you. Just send me an, uh, a personal message on Twitter. My Twitter address is in the description box below. It now, a couple of videos back, we talked about the five stages that a picture goes through. And the first stage is roughing in. And that's what we're going to work on today is what we're going to rough it in. I'm looking at this reference photo and why I use the black and white contrast photo at the beginning is because I'm able to really see where the lights and darks are. So I'm kind of working off of this, but I'm taking my own artistic liberties because I'm not doing hyper real and I'm not doing a photo rendition of this. I'm not taking it to that level because you really can't do that in coloring books. And this is for all coloring books, whenever you come up with an orange, this is how you do that texture. So I'm gonna use this as my, my guide. Not exact, but my guide. <laughs> my daughter is just slanting in, trying to be so quiet, but so obvious. Say hello. Hi. <laughs> She's so cute. So we're gonna start off with using some goldenrod. And I'm gonna put the goldenrod into some of my darker areas. Now I know it's a yellow, we will be changing that up into the orange, but as a base color, I'm using the goldenrod. I'm going a little bit quick and I'm just getting a nice layer. I'm working with my hand all the way back on the pencil so that my layers stay light. Because we're working with the limitation of the coloring book paper, the lighter you go on the bottom layer, the better off you are. I'm working with a sharp pencil because that will help. If you use a dull pencil, you're kind of pushing down on the tooth and you really wanna do everything that you can do to conserve that tooth. Some Spanish yellow. And that's a little more orangey. Now I'm getting my lights in here first because I can always go darker. If you start off light, you won't regret it. Now these are very similar colors, the goldenrod and the Spanish. They may even sit next to each other. Um, in the spectrum, but you can see that the goldenrod is a little bit more mustard yellow, or it has a little bit more brown in it. 
So if you're working out of the CMW book, I want you to take out each page of the pencils that I'm using. So you'll take out the goldenrod page. You'll take out the Spanish yellow. All the colors, you're going to take those out, and then you're going to blend them. You're going to know that Spanish orange, and you're going to match up the square, and the goldenrod go together. You're going to fill in those colors. That means in the future, you know that those colors are safe to use without turning your page into mud. And if you are too new to know what mud is, is sometimes you blend two colors that you think should go together nicely and you end up with a really mucky, dirty looking color. And sometimes you just don't know what to blend. Sometimes you get some really startling results because these colored pencils have colors within them. So the strokes that I'm doing are very light and I'm crisscrossing them. So one layer is going in this direction and then I'm moving my hand and I'm going in this direction. This will help ensure a smooth gradient and that's called cross hatching. This is actually very comfortable on the hand and if you have hand problems where you develop pain, I won't even feel this when I, I get to it. I won't even feel the, the fatigue. That's how my hand is extremely loose. Now I'm following this. So here is darker and then it gets lighter until you have this area right in here where I'm going to switch to a brighter yellow. I'm, I'm still considering this roughing it in because I haven't blended it yet. And I've got about five or six layers on now in this area, but I feel I still have a lot of tooth. And that's because my layers are so light. You see that color saturation starting to come out? Okay, and I'm gonna start working on over here. The same goldenrod, I haven't changed anything. The sketch I gave you has a little bit of shade underneath. Now if yours isn't exactly like mine, no big deal. No orange is the same. Every orange in this world is different. So it's the same thing with leaves and flowers. Unless you're doing photo real, you can take a lot of liberty with those, with those things. This is a medium. This would be light. It's sort of got kind of like a yin yang on it. You have this and then you have this. And of course we are not doing a lemon, so it will get a lot more orangey, I promise. I'm gonna switch you on to hyperlapse because this is... where I have my darks in where I want them and my lights in where I want them. Of course, I'm going to saturate it much more with color just so that you can see that by varying the colors and following the inspiration picture, how much more natural the coloration on it looks than just doing a ball. This is what I see so many people do when this is really what you're supposed to be doing. And because you're coloring in such smaller areas, it's way easier on your hand. Hold that pencil light. My hand barely feels 
anything. So we're getting to the point where I'm going to have to start the next phase of this. So we're going from roughing in, now we're going into layering. Now when I layer, what I'm doing is I'm creating sort of like a sandwich of color. Now this is important for you CMW followers, okay? You want to create that layer so that when we go to the blending stage, which is next, the colors are going to turn to what you want them to be. So while I'm not using any real orange orange on this, I mean, Pale Vermilion is a form of orange and I have been using that, but it's not the bright orange pencil that you would think I'd be using on this. But when I mix this with the goldenrod, I'm going to get that orange color without having to do it unnaturally in here or really hard. Like I used a lot of orange in this and it doesn't really look like an orange over here, even though that's the orange color. So now I'm starting to layer and I put in a lot of yellow over here. And I put in a layer of white. I don't know if you saw it in the um, hyperlapse, but that's just to keep it very light. Now I'm just going over the colors with my pale vermilion, keeping my light areas light and my dark. Burnt area. okra has is a brown, but it has a little bit of orange in it, and it has a little bit of um, red in it, so it hails from that sort of area and that's why it'll go really good it's a natural color it's an earthing tone and that's why it mixes really well with the other pencils that I've chosen so my dark dark areas are now going to have the burnt okra on it and I've switched over to this one I sent you guys this one my printer I'm missing one color on my printer that I have to replace that's why it's kind of funky in the colors, but I can see it really well over here where my lights and my darks go. So I'm going to get a nice little layer of the burnt okra right over here. So now we're into the layering stage, as I said. So first I roughed it in kind of just following where I need to go. Now I'm layering it for blending that I will be doing next. And if it's not perfect to the, you know, it doesn't look exactly like the picture, it's okay. Every orange is different, light hits things differently. But the idea is not to do it like a ball. Do not do a pure gradient going across it you want to pick your shadow areas. It'll come out much better and it's a lot more fun. And we still have to add texture. We haven't added te any texture to this yet. And it's already looking much better and much more like a real orange. Now, right here, going this way, there's a very dark area. I didn't rough this in. You could bounce from stage to stage. Some people like to sweep through their picture, so I would do everything in this area and sweep to it and develop it. I sort of work from the bottom up. I've said that in my other videos too. It's all the style that you like to do. I'm definitely a build the color up person, not somebody who can work inch by inch. And I haven't even exhausted my tooth yet. And look how many layers I've got on here. I wouldn't even be able to count. Now, there's a darker shadow in here. Don't worry about the ugly phase. I've talked about this in other videos. There's a point where the picture is gonna look bad. And every artist knows this point. It's when you're layering it and it's not exactly perfect yet, like it's underdeveloped in some areas and 
more developed in other areas and the picture just looks like you want to quit. That's the point where you keep going on, especially when it comes to texture. When it doesn't look like the texture you want and then all of a sudden it turns into it. If you follow the instructions, like hair, when I'm doing hair, sometimes it just doesn't look like hair until I'm way into it and then all of a sudden it's very natural. So I'm following some of these darker areas over here and I just wanted to get it in so I'm still roughing some areas in. Now this would take me hours. I'm trying to do this fast. In fact, I'm looking at my time. I've got 37 minutes of filming. And that's with hyperlapse. So I'm into this a good... <laughs> I'm roughing it in for about an hour now. So I'm going to stop at that for this video and let you guys catch up with your own pictures. There's a lighter area down here. So I'm going to darken up. I'm still going very light because I'm changing the gradient. So I'm going very light. Now, why can you guess why would it suddenly turn light? That's a reflective shadow. I talked about that in other videos that sometimes around the edge you'll have a light band and that's light bouncing off the ground and back up. Not all objects or photos have that reflective shadow, but, and it's hard to see it when you're looking at an object, but it's there. And the lighter the layer, the easier the blend. I wanna keep that very light. I think what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna add some white. And then I'm gonna add a color over it because really you don't have any stark white in this picture. Sometimes if you use white too early, it doesn't show up. And now I can go darker down here because my reflective shadow is there. I'm pretty well defined. Now, I don't want you making a ring of pearls or a pearl necklace. And I see so many people that do that. I did it on here on purpose. See this dark outline? I don't know why everybody thinks that that goes there. Try to avoid doing it. Even if you have to say, I wanna get rid of this. Even if you have to go out and make sort of irregular lines, I saturated this paper so it's not going to show up that much I don't have that much or any tooth left on this paper but you see how much better the blend looks when you don't have that ring going around now imagine if I kept working on it and I brought that edge to being um, gone or I didn't completely scrub wax into this circular Thing. much nicer look just avoid doing if you can get out of that habit and I ha I saw a lot of pictures because we were setting up the groups I've seen a lot of pictures this week probably I've seen more pictures this week than probably the whole entire time that I've been coloring combined I saw hundreds of them this week I would say more than half had the ring of pearls all coming from newbie colorists so if I can grab you and tell you to stop while you're still learning the process. See what's bad is there's some ink down on the paper from the sketch. I don't, I don't like that. I'm gonna blend it out, but the ink on the paper and the pencil kind of make it look muddy. I'm still going about as light as you can go. That's gonna be a highlight. 
why I'm avoiding it. Okay, I'm going to stop now on here and let you guys get your bottom layers done. If you're in the group, send me your pictures once you get your bottom layers done. This is not the texture part. We're going to do texture next on this picture. We just still remember we're roughing it in and we're putting on some layers that we will, we're not even blended yet. So I will see you in a day or two and send me those pictures. Take care. Mm -hmm.